If the Sun Devils are going to get their second win of the year, they're going to need to do these three things, and we're going to discuss them on this edition of the Locked On Sun Devils podcast. You are Locked On Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. Wherever you're getting your podcast, hit like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. You can stay in touch with that content by following me on Twitter at RichieBrads36, the podcast at LO underscore Sun Devils. And before we get started, a shout out to my everydayers who are here every day and making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50 plus infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. There is a lot of things the Sun Devils need to work on if they're going to get wins this year. Like, based off of what we have seen this year, this team is not going to win a lot of football games. There's a lot of improvements that need to be made on both sides of the football. The offense definitely feels like they've got more to work on than the defensive side of the ball, but that certainly doesn't mean that the defense is innocent by any means. But this is something that we'll talk more about as we get ready to enter Pac-12 play next week. For now... We're going to be looking at some keys to victory for the Sun Devils against Fresno State this weekend. It's going to be on both sides of the football, but the bottom line, I think you guys are going to agree with these three keys to victory that I've got laid out. We'll go ahead and start with the most the most obvious one. You need to play all four quarters. You're, you're simply not going to win a football game if you are not playing a full 60 minutes. You need to find a way to be able to Play every down the hardest that you possibly can with all of your effort, not taking plays off, not going three and out, not letting drives go right down the field on defense. You need to be able to play the full 60 minutes. And, you know, this doesn't mean that you're going to be shutting teams out. You know, it doesn't mean you're going to be blowing them out 70 to, to nothing. Like, that's not a realistic expectation for Alabama and Georgia, let alone Arizona State, what you need is to show that you're going to be a competent and capable football team that is able to play in these football games that maybe you shouldn't be able to be competitive in. Like for Oklahoma State, they're like a, they're a weird rebuilding team. They were rolling with three different quarterbacks. They've got a lot of changes on both sides of the football from the transfer portal, from young kids coming in, from guys that are in the NFL or no longer have their eligibility. Like they were definitely a rebuilding team, which made this a winnable football game. The problem was the Sun Devils came out and they played the first 30 minutes of the game and then it disappeared in the final 30 minutes of the game. And you just can't do that. It ultimately cost the Sun Devils the game when they were shut out in the second half. The offense could not move the football down the field, they were sustaining a lot of three and outs. There were, uh, there, there was a turnover in the game. Like you have to be able to help your defense out and defensively, like there's really not much that you can really hang on them for the Oklahoma state game. They were left out there a long time and eventually the fatigue is just going to catch up with you. And suddenly big plays happen, long drives happen and points are given up. You really can't fault the defense that much, at least, for the performance last week. A lot of it has to do with the offensive side of the football. So when looking at offense, no matter who's a quarterback, I believe it should be Jaden Rashada. A lot of you believe it should be Drew Pine or Trenton Borgay, and that's fine. Whoever's at quarterback, though, no matter what, needs to be able to get sustained drives, move the football down the field, and at a minimum, just take some time off the clock, even if you have to punt the ball away. You know, you need to be able to run more than three plays, have decent little drives. And then, you know, in best case scenario, we're getting points on every drive. It's not going to happen. But if you have to punt the football, hopefully you're 
doing it in a situation where you were able to give your defense a little bit more time than a three and out to catch their breath, get hydrated and ready for the next drive. Ideally, you want to see those points. And he would like to see us get into the end zone a little more consistently. The Sun Devils have have been fine on offense, right? They've got five touchdowns on the year, uh, two via Cameron Scadaboo on the ground. Jane Rashada has three through the air. That's fine. Five touchdowns in your first two games in a brand new system with a freshman quarterback. It is what it is. It is what it is. You're just hoping to take those steps forward. That's what you kind of want to see this week is that the offense is taking those those steps forward to be a more consistent unit that isn't punting the ball away seemingly on every drive. Even if you're kicking field goals, you would love to see that. I believe Longhetto only has one field goal kick this year. He might have two. I don't have the stats in front of me. But give him those opportunities to get you points. That's what you're looking for right now is just a more consistent, not production, just consistency on offense to be able to get sustained drives. Defensively, you definitely want to see a little more from them. Like they they're doing a very good job of limiting of limiting the opposing offenses. I know that Oklahoma State was really struggling to get past midfield during the first part of the game. They were really doing a good job against Southern Utah as well. Like they're coming out and they're playing good football. You wonder how much of it has to do with like the offense putting them out there so much is the reason that they're giving up points and whatnot, but there's definitely room for improvement. You want to see a little tighter coverage. You want to see them be able to get home to uh, the quarterback more, make some TFLs, generate some turnovers. We're going to talk more about the defense here in just a moment, but there's, there's definitely a lot that could be worked on. But the bottom line here, at least when it comes to keys for your victory, you need to be able to see these guys play the full 60 minutes because if they continue to do this style of football where they're really only putting up, you know, 30 minutes worth of play, 45 minutes worth of play, 15 minutes worth of play, you're just not going to win football games. It doesn't matter who you play against. So the biggest key to victory here is having these guys play a full 60 minutes. I don't care how you do it. Just be able to do it as the bottom line. Everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you peace of mind so that you're not just hoping that you have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical makes sure that you have the medication in hand. Jace Medical is simple. They handle everything from online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation and care. Don't get caught unprepared. Save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional $20 off by using the code Locked On at checkout. Jace, it's You're going to go to jacemedical.com. That's jace, J-A-S-E, medical.com with the promo code Locked On College. College football season is here, and this season, Locked On is giving you our coverage all the way up to kickoff with Locked On College Football Kickoff Live. Each Friday, Locked On will go live from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern on every Locked On College Football YouTube channel. College Football Live Kickoff will cover live implications for playoffs, the conference rivalry games, and go in-depth like only Locked On can provide including the insight and analysis from our stable of Locked On College hosts covering their team every day. Find Locked On College Football Kickoff Live every Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern on any college football channel on YouTube. You won't want to miss it. Let's go ahead and get right back into our conversation now and talk about some of the Sun Devil keys to victory here. We flip to the defensive side of the football. Look, I'll, I'll say this. There's a lot of stuff that the offense needs to work on. I feel like we covered quite a bit of it. From here, it's going to be more on the defense. I think the defense is going to be what wins and loses this game. They've played very well. Hopefully, they're going to be able to continue to play well because if we expect that the Sun Devils offense is going to come out and put up 50 points, that's incredibly unrealistic. They're going to need a lot of help from the defense, which is where we move forward here now. Let's go ahead and talk about 
one of the most obvious cases for the Sun Devils to improve on. That's a pass rush. They were not able to get home in their first game against Southern Utah. There were some plays made, but wasn't anything too great. I know Clayton Smith got ejected early in the game for a phantom uh, targeting call. Him being la- back last week seemed to be a really good uh, boost in the energy for them. They got home three different times, including a two-sack performance from B.J. Green. Hopefully, that's a sign of things to come. You're going to need that to continue to be one of the stronger components of your game. I got to sit down with some of the guys who uh, cover Fresno State on the uh, Beware of Bulldogs podcast earlier this week. And some of the information they were telling me was definitely noteworthy. One of the things was that the offensive line is a little suspect and it is going through a lot of changes, which could potentially lead to some sacks for the Sun Devils. So you need to be able to capitalize on that. You need to be able to look at an offensive line that maybe isn't the best unit in the world and find a way to be able to generate that pressure. You've got the guys to do it. BJ Green showed that he is more than capable of being a full-time pass rusher for the team and somebody who's going to be able to get home and somebody who can get sacks and get pressures, hopefully get some turnovers too. Maybe he gets those strip sacks or whatever, gets into the back backfield for tackles for loss. There's a lot of different things that you're hoping BJ Green is able to provide for you. And I definitely believe in BJ Green to be able to provide those different things for you. He's one of the guys that I trust the most, if not the most, on the defensive side of the football. He's just a very, very good player. So it's not just going to be on him, though. You're going to need to see some of the other guys step up as well in the pass rushing department. Uh, Clayton Smith did have a sack last week that was wiped out by an illegal contact or a holding penalty in the secondary. I like him to also be able to get home this week and somebody that is going to be able to generate enough pass rush and enough pressure to ease the load on the secondary. This is definitely between him and green cornerstone edge rushers, which we've talked about all off season. They looked like it last week because if Clayton Smith doesn't get that wiped away, that's three sacks between those two guys. You can't ask for much more than three sacks from two guys in a game. That's outstanding. You don't necessarily need to get that every week, but you're hoping that maybe one of them can get at least a sack a week, even if they're like in a, uh, in like a part-time rotation kind of thing. Even if you're just getting like knockdowns and stuff like that, that's what you're looking for out of this Sun Devils team. You want to see that the pass rush is going to be a factor. And those two are where it starts. But you also want to see some of the other guys that are able to go as well. I know that Prince Dorval was able to get in for a half sack last week as well. Maybe he's able to generate some more pressure um, as a rotation guy. Garrett Stansbury is someone you'll be paying attention to. The interior of the line. Very interesting. I just don't know how much pass rushing production you're going to get out of them, but you're definitely hoping that they can help collapse that pocket. Deshaun Mallory is definitely the most important player on the defensive interior for the team. He's the most veteran guy. He's the most proven guy. He's got the most playtime experience by far. You're looking for him to continue to be a presence there. Next to him, It's going to be a bevy of guys. It's going to be a rotation. You're hoping Anthony Cooper's back. I haven't seen anything on him. Hopefully he's returning because you definitely miss his presence. Even if he's there, you're still going to be rotating guys like Tristan Monday, Sam Benjamin, CJ Fight. They need to be able to generate some plays as well. If you get a full effort from your defensive line, that makes life easier for the rest of the team. Maybe you're looking for... Uh, some of your linebackers get involved as well. I know that Dorva's half sack was split with Trey Brown. Maybe he's able to consistently be the other guy at the at the linebacker position that's able to get pressure. I don't really know. Like Tate Romney, we're still waiting to see what he can do as a full time player. He's looked very well, very good so far. Bottom line, though, you just need to be able to find some pass rush this week. I don't really care who it's from. You just need guys to be consistent enough that you can rely on them to generate that pressure, make the quarterback uncomfortable, and maybe 
lead to something else. Look, if you're looking to get your tickets at the last second, it shouldn't be stressful, no matter how last second it is. And you should be using game time because game time is the fast, easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you with killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee. You can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped about the fun you're going to have. There's all sorts of different things that make the experience great, such as flash deals and last minute ticket findings, easy to find and buy tickets for any kind of event in your area with images of the seat so that you make sure that it looks exactly the way you want it to look, a lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, and more. You can forget about planning months in advance because game time has the deals right up until the time of the event. And you can get images of your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. You can buy the tickets in a matter of seconds. Two taps and you're all set. Tickets are sent directly to your phone so you never have to dig through your email. Snag the tickets without stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Wherever you're getting your podcast, like, subscribe, turn on notifications. You won't want to miss tomorrow's episode of the show as we go through an entire game breakdown including players to watch for Fresno State, keys to victory. Well, we already did keys to victory. We'll look at the offense and defense is what I mean. Bold predictions and a score prediction for the Sun Devils. You won't want to miss it. Turn on notifications. Final key to victory. And this is typically a key every week, but this is even more prevalent right now because the Sun Devils have yet to do this. Force turn overs. There have been zero turnovers forced by the Sun Devils this year. No interceptions, no fumble recoveries. They need to get on the board there. If you continue to be a team that cannot get turnovers, it's just going to hurt your team in the long run. And this is what I was talking about for Arizona State when we were, we were, or not we, when I was looking at the team. When I was coming up with keys to victory, I was definitely focused on the defense trying to get more turnovers. That is where they can improve the most. That is where they can really take that next step forward. You know, getting pressure is really good. Getting three and outs is really good. You definitely need those to win a game. But the turnovers is what can really decide a victor and a loser in a game. This is where the Sun Devils just have to step up. If they're able to get those turnovers forced, it gives your offense more opportunities. And for an offense that has really struggled to be able to capitalize on their drives, period, getting them extra drives, that's going to help them. That's going to help them get those reps. It's going to help them get more consistency, consistency, get those opportunities to try different things, especially you're in, you're in week three of the season. Now you're going to be opening up your playbook a little more. The playbook is going to look a lot more vast than what we saw week one against Southern Utah, probably even a little more than what we saw week two against Oklahoma state. Like you want to be able to unlock your offense more and more as the year goes on. You want them to be comfortable because next week is PAC 12 play and you're playing USC. And right now that's, that's not a good looking game. Quite frankly, unless you blow out Fresno State 40 to nothing, you're going to be going into that USC game with very low expectations. So what you need now is the turnovers. If you cannot get turnovers, I just don't know how much value, not value, but how much trust I can put into your team and your defense, especially sacks only matter so much. Forcing punts only matters so much. The three and outs are great, though. You need to create turnovers. Give your offense more opportunities to get points on the board, to have more drives, to get the defense off the field so that they're they're re, re-energized and ready to go for the next drive. Have those long, sustained drives, but again, giving them those opportunities. It gives the offense opportunities, and it gives the defense time to get off the field, relax, 
drink some water, get some oxygen, whatever. But the turnovers have to come. And this is absolutely on the defensive side of the football. You've got guys who should be able to make plays. From your pass rush, you're hoping that B.J. Green and Clayton Smith can turn into some strip sack guys. Maybe your interior guys are able to punch the ball out. But you definitely look at the secondary, first and foremost, for the guys that you want to see being able to create turnovers. You've got guys back there that are able to do it. Shamari Simmons, D. Ford, and Chris Edmonds could be those guys. Jordan Clark's not a big turnover guy. Neither is Roe Torrance, but you're definitely hoping they can step up their game there. Maybe get some guys like Mason Williams and Ed Wood some opportunities. You just, bottom line, need to be able to create those turnovers. If you don't get turnovers, that is more often than not what wins and loses a football game. I'm looking forward to the team being able to create more turnovers. Part of that's going to be on the pass rush as well. When you have those two things working together at the same time, your defense is playing lights out. And look, the defense has played very good football these first two weeks, but you're missing the turnovers. If you get the turnovers for this team, your defense is going to get to new heights and they're going to start to become an even more confident unit that believes that they can get some upset wins. They can get to two and one this year. They can start off the year in Pac-12 play with a winning record. But in order to get there, the defense needs to generate pressure that turns into sacks, and you need to be able to force some turnovers. And then the team as a whole, but especially, especially the offense, needs to play a full 60 minutes. What do you guys think are the keys to victory for the Sun Devils in this game? Let me know in the comments below, or you can hit me up on Twitter at RichieBrats36 and the podcast as well at LO underscore Sun Devils. That's all that I got for you guys today. Thanks, as always, for tuning in wherever you get your podcast. Hit like and subscribe. Turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. Monday through Friday, free and available on all platforms. And a shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. I will see you guys tomorrow as we go through our breakdown of the game, including bold predictions and a score. You keep it locked right here on Locked on Sun Levels.